Uh, we've heard that uh, that's the only concert that you will play in Poland. Yes. This year? No, ever. Ever? The that's the first time ever you've been to Poland? Yeah. How, how has it been so far? Oh, it's been beautiful. Uh, really beautiful. Uh, I like the idea also because uh, my grandmother and grandfather were born in uh, Poland. Mm. So I have some some more That's close relation with this, you know, uh, Mindelis is from here. I don't know, I don't remember where exactly, but close. And... Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, close Poland, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Where exactly? Yeah. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I ever knew where my grandmother was born, but I think it's now Ukraine, because it was part of the uh, Poland that became Ukraine. And uh, well, so that's I'm, I'm home. <laughs> Welcome home. Welcome home, Thank then. You. Thank you very much. When uh, you left Poland? I'm sorry. Uh, when your parents left Poland? Uh, uh, you know that thing about the Second World War, people would go to Portugal mm. as a... As Immigration. A, as a, uh, yeah, as a point to go to US. Mm. So what happened? My grandmother, Dina Mindelis, and two sisters and a brother went to Portugal just as a stopover to go to US. And... Uh, and uh, Dina, my grandmother, stayed in Lisbon. She married or something like that. And, uh, and uh, oh no, she was already married, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. She stayed there. And the rest of the sister brothers went to U US and Canada and she stayed in Lisbon. It was uh, before the Second World War or during the Second World War? Uh, I know my mother was born in Lisbon, but I, I don't have. I'm sorry. I, I, I wish I knew that. I, I don't really know. <laughs> I think it was during, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's a refugee family, let's say. And then I was born in Angola because Angola was Portuguese by then, and my father uh, ended up in Angola because his father had problems with the Salazar dictator in Portugal. So again, some ref polit politic refugee to Africa, and. Uh, so he met my mother there and then I was a refugee myself at 17 because there was a civil war in Angola when the Portuguese said okay take this they forgot to say who takes it and there were uh, three different uh, guerrillas claiming Angola is ours Portuguese said okay this Angola is yours who so they started fighting. So there were four armies inside one city, 800,000 people. And there I was. It was in the 70s? Yeah, 74. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I, I have a book ready on that oh, thing. Sure. I never, <laughs> never published it. But it could be a movie because I have war scenes and stuff. Uh, it's, it has been an interesting and turbulent life. <laughs> mm. <laughs> And uh, in the middle of all that, I started playing the blues when I was a kid. Well, here I am. Playing blues. Can you tell us something more about what can we expect during today, uh, this, your performance? Blues or rock? 
Yeah, blues rock. Because I was, I was actually. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get to. Yes, the, no problem. I, I was, uh, I was listening to blues in early age. Uh, because I was paying attention to what the old people would listen. Because if you're a musician, a real one, you are born and you start trying to learn what's going on in music. That's what happened to me. I, people say, when did you decide to be a musician? I don't remember ever having thought, oh, I'm going to be a musician. Uh, it just, you know, like the same the thing to draw, I can draw. Mm. Those things came, I was born like that. Oh, came people naturally. would steal my, my mm. papers in the school because I was drawing things. And, uh, uh, well, as always, I forgot. Oh, okay. Then I heard Big Bill Bronzy because uh, I was friends with a teacher of uh, singing in the school. I was friends with her kid. He studied with me. I was in her home. And there was something, and there was an LP there. I was 11, and I said, hey, what's this? Oh, this is my grandfather's stuff. Don't worry about that. I said, let's listen to this. And I heard, somebody's calling me in Ahush. I said, wow, what the hell? Uh, this is not just Beethoven then. This is great. <laughs> and I started trying to copy right away. I got a, an acoustic, and I went like, dun, 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 woo. And uh, my life was changing as I was listening to those things. said rock yeah then rock came I mean rock existed already but I was paying attention to soul and blues but then the Woodstock oh contaminated and all that British stuff and so I'm actually result of a blues kid with a rock teenager mm. so I never I ne I've never done a rock album uh, blues or rock entirely album, but uh, when you listen to Texas Bound, the, the album I recorded in 95 and it was released in 96 with the Double Trouble guys, there's a song called Texas Bound and this is one that I, I want to do mm -hmm. that has some kind of riff that is, in my opinion, the, the meaning of all the things I listen to because you have the blues there and you have the rock riff there. It's like a metal blues or something, da, 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 a hard rock blues. Uh, and so I th sometimes I listen to that song and I think, well, look at this. This is an American would not do this probably because it would do it entirely bluesy. And uh, Maybe a British guy would do this with a little bit of classic music, but it, it, I don't know, it, it's... I think that's the... Hey, what's Nuno? It's this. This is the, the cradle. You know, the, the influences of, of that time. I was really blown up by Woodstock and all that thing. That was the... You know, everybody was playing blues, actually. Uh, all that rock and roll is blues. Uh, Deep Purple is speedy blues. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. All this uh, happened when you were uh, a young kid in Angola. Yeah. Well, then I uh, had to leave and I went to Canada and I was already playing. And, um, and then I went to Brazil to join my father because we were landed. Uh, things. I mean, I was sleeping, landed by a friend here, my father, because we lost everything in the 70s. In the 74, I lost every 75. And, um, uh, well, 
then I went to Brazil. I had to start working in a different stuff because everything I, I had nothing, nothing. But I always kept playing. And people would say in the job, they would say, hey, your hobby is music, isn't it? As I would say, yeah. But actually, the hobby was not the music. Music was the main thing. The job was the hobby, maybe. But I had to feed my, I had three ch children to feed. It's, it's kind of, uh, uh, your life changes when you're in exile. There was some kind of amnesia from 75 to 85. Uh, people would talk about things that I wouldn't remember. And uh, I had a big problem not liking anything except, you know, I said, I, I stopped in Jimi Hendrix. Don't tell me about anything else. Hey, you like White Snake? No, I don't know that. Hey, do you like, you know, all those bands, 76? I don't even know because it was, I didn't have time. I, I had to, 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 I had to, to eat and things like that. But then, thankfully, now I like contemporary things and I like, you know, I started liking a lot of things that I, I, uh, I, I used not to like things that now I like very much. And, and not, not the blues, not just the blues. I mean, mm. I don't listen much blues, to be very frank. Uh, I listen, uh, if it plays, I raise the volume, if it's an, an old thing. If it's contemporary blues, it's very hard for me to, to raise the volume, although they play a lot. But it's like, uh, as I used to tell Yuri, uh, technically everything is really good, but uh, maybe because I got older, I want innovation. I want different... Uh, oh, come on, look at me speaking about the other people's work. But I like to, you know, I think yes. about that thing. Because uh, it's, uh, in fact, Jeff Beck said the same, because he said, this is, this is great, but uh, it doesn't change for 40 years. It's, it's always the same thing. It, it, so I thought, uh, maybe because I started very young, uh, we, we didn't even call that blues. We used to say that we were playing blues, rock, rock and roll. And, like some guys in the Bossa Nova in Brazil, they ask him about João Donato, he's a, I love him. And they do a lot of things about the Bossa Nova. Let's do, uh, you know, Bossa Nova Summit and uh, a tribute to Bossa Nova. They do a lot of things like that. And they ask João Donato a lot of things and he goes and says, well, I don't know, people is just talking about Bossa Nova, Bossa Nova. We didn't call that bossa nova. I was doing that thing for long. Mm. It's not, you know. Now it became like a it's bossa nova. Uh, I understand him as well because when you start something, you're very young. Then things start to have a different meaning from the meaning that you know. João was in, in the beginning of the thing. He was seminal, so he doesn't understand the. Well, never mind. I'm just. Okay. It happens. From, first of all, notes. We know that you you write your own lyrics. I'd like uh, to know what is uh, uh, an inspiration of your of your lyrics: love, or uh, tragedy, or or nature, or, or happiness, or something else. Well, to be true, I haven't been writing for a while. When I I kind of gave up a little bit writing in English for the blues albums. I write a lot in Portuguese mm -hmm. and, uh, and I consider myself a poet, really. No, no, no. And, uh, but the things that I wrote in, uh, in the past about, I, I tried to make it, make it it could not be the same that I would write in Portuguese, because when I write in Portuguese, it's very, her uh, how do you say? True to your heart. Her hermetic. It's, oh, okay. It's mm -hmm. kind of, uh, in, it's more literate, you know, mm -hmm. more uh, classic. Mm -hmm. So I remember when I was writing in English, 
to be true, it was almost everything about my wife, but don't tell her because uh, it was about, you know, frustrations or had joy or it was not exactly my wife, it was my life by then, you know, three kids and problem and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to miss me when I'm gone and things like that. <laughs> it's the blue stuff, you know, my baby left me. Mm. <laughs> It was not, and this is why I, I stopped writing because I didn't want to do lyrics that aren't uh, actually meaningful in terms of literature. That's what I mean. So uh, now I have a lot of lyrics done by uh, some songwriters that I know, guys that I play with in England or another one in Canada that can be real poetic. And I like that because it's their first language. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I could write something more deep in English, but I never, I, I never tried to. Yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, I was happy that the pr producer of Blues on the Outside is another record that I did with Double Trouble in Austin, Texas. Uh, has a song called um, Walk Away. Ba walk away baby and he said it was the best lyrics in the record so I'm very happy because it's not my first la first language but again it was uh, when I see your picture on the wall that was the you know walk away baby because we broke up but I see your picture every time and I come you know that kind of <laughs> bluesy stuff all right. So, what do you think? Lyrics uh, are important, or can you change the world with the words or uh, your ideas and songs? Can you change the world or uh, style of uh, style of thinking of some people? Is it possible? I think so. Yeah. N not with. I don't. Th yeah. I think so. The main message is important. Uh, a main message, like, uh, let me think about something like, uh, I'm talking about blues lyrics, right? Or any lyrics. Any. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, uh, that can change a lot. Mm -hmm. the blowing in the wind and uh, <laughs> uh, desolation road, that kind of, you know real poetry, real literature. I think the message is important. Yeah, I think it can change. Uh, and also the music can change. Sometimes we play and see kids, you know, and you see their eyes shine a little. So this may be changing this kid's life. And in Brazil, especially useful, because there are a lot of kids with no, no path. Mm. And sometimes you catch those and, well, maybe you saved a life there because he could uh, be a, some criminal later or, you know, get lost some, somehow and, and he starts to... Because when I was very young, there were some festivals. I was really, really, you know, 10 years before that. And uh, I used to see the guys playing live and... It, is one of the reasons maybe I became a musician. I'm, I cannot state that, but I think it it could be because you can change people's life with that. So uh, the word changes lives as well, sure. <laughs> Thank you.
As long as it's a nice, consistent literature, well, uh, you I was trying to remember some blues lyrics that that have a strong message. Uh, can't remember now, but uh, well, maybe things like "Hoochie Coochie Man." Maybe. Al Sorry. Al Camões. Camões. Oh, that's. I had to read those things. Uh, big Lusíadas. You're talking yeah. about. Yeah. I was 15 years old. I had to read all those things, and this is what. Okay, I speak too much. I'm sorry. But no. this is what. I I was trying to. You know, everyone that is not American or born in the Mississippi has a conflict because your heroes are the black Americans of the blues. Those are my heroes of uh, adolescence. And... But then you studied in different environments. You had to read Camões, you had to read uh, all those things in school. So. So this is why Van Morrison, for example, he sings the blues, but he sings his literature, literature as well. So that's what I think it could be done and should probably be done. Bob Dylan said that uh, uh, he, was, he liked a lot the rock and roll, when the rock and roll arised. You know, those guys really are really great, but they are dumb. They, they, you know, blue suede shoes, they, they don't, you know, it's stupid. It's, it's not in, important, yeah. that's what he said. Uh, and then the Beatles came and he said, well, these guys are smart because they do the rock and roll, but they do, they, they write nice and in, in interesting things. So, so this is what rock and roll has to be. So let's bring it back home that's when he did the record called bringing it back home because the rock is ours he said he's american and now we can s speak uh more consistently instead of this and, and and i think that's what what does a white guy uh, you know raised in nice schools and stuff uh it's it's kind of stupid to try to write a poem, the same poem twice, I mean, the guy is going to imitate John Lee Hooker. It makes no sense. Uh, uh, he was not starving in a cotton plantation, right? Mm. He was studying in, uh, uh, in in London, so why? And uh, well, I don't know why I said all this, but I said it, I'm sorry. Th these are things that I... S but. Actually, for somebody that is not uh, English or American, it's even harder because, because for guys like Van Morrison or Eric Clapton, they sing the same language as the blues guys and uh, we Portuguese or Brazilian or Polish speak different language. So uh, I'm singing in the African dialect. I think it's one of the 57 dialects in Africa, uh, the one that I used to listen more when I was a kid, which is called Kimbundu. I have been done so doing songs in Kimbundu. I feel more legitimate because I used to build my can guitars with my little black fellows and I used to listen to Kimbundu, the, the Kimbundu and Ombundu, two different dialects, uh, all my uh, youth and adolescence. So I was thinking about doing that in here. I don't know what's your opinion. Try to ask Yurek what he thinks about singing in Kimbundu in a blues festival. But I, uh, I think it, I feel like. Why not? It's yeah. in English. Why not? Why not? Yeah, it's more natural for me than... Uh, but see, on the other hand, English is important or we wouldn't be speaking here.